Hello, and welcome back again to the continuation of my book. Chapter 2 Trials of Rebirth. But the text that is up there and has not been continued will now continue. The passage of time is nothing that really feels like anything for a Cytonian. He remained completely still in the skies, waiting for everything to settle down, which did take a good couple of million years. He did not want to destroy anything anymore, not even crushing a single stone, he stared at his home world. It was just a white glowing ball. All of the colorful structures and its diverse people turned into a blank slate. He was not sad anymore. With his loudest cry for help not yielding anything, he felt nothing but a sense of duty. A duty that would shape the rest of his shattered universe into something new and hopefully eternal. Chapter 2 Trials of Rebirth The universe as it is known for the most intelligent Cytonians is that it is not endless. It just extends to a wall, which in fact is the border to the second step of existence. <clears throat> Scythus did for the most part ruin the majority of his universe, of this universe. But what is left? But with what? But with what is left? He wants to treasure it with his life. He started to rebuild his home world. But in order to do that successfully, he needed critical thinking. He has good intuition, but the world is diverse, just like he was in the crowd of people who never stopped him from ruining everything. He wanted a new breed of, of a Cytonian. A second generation that has to boldness to question him. But this is a dangerous thing to do. He wants another Cytonian to judge the other one's actions. He created two young Cytonians, first Tig and then Targniel. Tig would be the one who simply enjoys something being created and Targnil, the destroyer. It was a great idea to instill a sense of balance, but as he soon would become to realize, it might have been a bad idea. As predicted, Tig liked to play around and create her new toys to expand her creativity with. Now, Targnil had uh, very little interest to create something for her own amusement. She literally became a bully, knocking over Tig's creations and watching her gawk in awe in the situation of it. Scythus did not understand the possible negative implications of a bully. He just liked to watch them. But as soon as he started to see why 
Targnil was not a good idea to give life to. He saw Tig create something that literally punched Targnil away from her creations. It was even stronger than the petty actions Targnil did to ruin Tig's way of a good time. A creator surpassing the forceful ability of a destroyer. As Tig kept making new weapons to blast Targnil, Scythus stood in silent confusion how someone who is meant to cherish, cherish life and creation is so adept at ending it. But Targnil, being a Cytonian, she did not die from the constant fights between her and Tig. Scythus, on the other hand, had most of his structures damaged to prevent his homeworld from being wrecked by their violent quarrels. He created two new planets for Tig and Targnil, and banished them to reassess their lives on these new worlds. An easy but necessary solution, he thought. It did give him more free time to focus on his duties. He built a great city and filled it with new beings, new lives, and a new purpose. His ability to create and watch it flourish gave him a newfound pride in being a father of millions once again. But being a true father is not to take responsibility of such a vast diversity. It would contradict his main goal. With his immense authority, he decided to retire and watch his seed take form into what was to become the Cabrian Omnia. With Scythus gone, the ones left to fulfill his goal was his two children, Tig and Targnil. Tig claimed her realm, which was the closest to orbit Scythus homeworld, to be named Raidutan. Targnil was given a smaller planet that orbited further away, with skies much darker. It was named Dotvutan. Cytonians such as Scythus, Tig and Targnil have no phonetical language. They use simple thought patterns to describe something quick and simple through their complicated facial expressions. They do think lightning fast after all. <laughs> the names stated for what things were in these ancient times are deduced from our current knowledge of their language. And this language is what is to become the main language of the Cabrian Omnia. The name Cabrius, Cabrius is what refers to Scythus' former empire, the one he is trying to rebuild. As stated, Omnire is an empire that is omnipotent, stretching across the entirety of the universe. And this is what Scythus wants to rebuild, but his children 
Tig and Targnil are still thriving, changing his ideal world into something entirely else. Tig, who is a curious creator, is the first one to completely transform her entire planet into a lush and beautiful garden full of wondrous plants and animals. Targnil, on the other hand, was stuck with nothing but a planet she herself turned into a hostile mess full of crumbling mountains and geological anomalies. Floating rocks that burn and stormy oceans that never saw the light of day. With the vastness of space beyond those dark skies, Targnil did not bother to venture out. She was too entertained by the cycle of destruction she bestowed upon her world. On Tig's planet, Raijutan, she maintained a stable ecosystem that grew, died, and rebirthed. A beautiful cycle of nature. But she could not help but to feel a sense of apathy towards towards this cycle that kept repeating over and over again. With nothing new to discover. Unlike the skies of Dotvatan, Targnil's world, Raidutan had clear skies with visible stars shimmering in the vast emptiness of space during the night. Her father, Scythus, told her that he destroyed the entire universe. Yet, there was a band of faint stars that she could see in the night skies. She knew that stars were alike her father's homeworld, bright and shining. But these ones were much further away. So Tig left Raidutan out on a voyage that would shape the Cabrian Omnire into something that it once was. Universe spanning and even greater than ever. Chapter 2 End